Hello friends, this video on food production enhancement part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about plant breeding for disease resistance. So how is plant breeding done to ensure that the plants are resistant to diseases? So let us see how can we improve the plant breeding, how can we use plant breeding techniques for disease resistance. Now it has been observed that there are huge crop losses due to diseases which are caused by many different factors whether they are caused by pathogens or they are caused due to some uh, environmental changes or whatever but due to diseases a lot of crops get destroyed and so the loss is huge for example if you talk about crops like potato where you have this disease called late blight of potato which is caused by a bacteria again in sugarcane you can see red rot of sugarcane which is again caused by another bacteria so there are many microorganisms like bacteria or virus which cause a lot of diseases in plants and that is how they can damage the entire plant so these diseases are mostly caused by pathogens that is the disease causing microorganisms. So how can we control uh, the loss due to these diseases? Now in case of human beings also we saw that there are so many diseases which are caused by pathogens that is these kind of microorganisms. Now how do we treat th those diseases in human beings? with the help of medicines. Now how that medicine helps? Now even before you can invent a medicine for any of the disease, what should be known? Two things should be known. That is the organism which is causing the disease. That is the exact bacteria or the fungi or uh, virus whichever is causing the disease. So the causative organism should be known and the mode of transmission should be known. That is how the disease gets transmitted from one organism to another. If those two things are known then a treatment or a solution or a prevention for that disease can be found out. So on similar lines plant breeding is done to ensure resistance to diseases. So this is done based upon two things or two facts causative organism for a disease and mode of transmission of disease. Now a large number of bacteria and viruses are responsible for a large number of plant diseases as I mentioned just now the late blight of potato which is caused by bacteria, red rot of sugarcane again caused by bacteria, the tobacco mosaic virus which again caused diseases in plants. So that means there are many such microorganisms which cause diseases. Now once you know the organism and also the way the disease gets transmitted from one plant to another, you can definitely help in preventing the disease. Now what are the breeding techniques for disease resistance? What exactly do we do to ensure that the plant is resistant to the disease? Now there are two types of breeding techniques that are available. One is the conventional breeding techniques and the other one is mutation breeding technique. So the con in the conventional breeding technique we, we will talk about it a little later. However we will see that in the conventional technique we do the same thing that is we have to collect all the varieties that is we create the germplasm collection and from the germplasm we select the varieties of our desirable traits and then we cross them and then we again select from them. So we follow the same procedure, the same the general steps of plant breeding. But in case of mutation breeding, what we do is little more interesting and it is little different as well. So let us start our discussion with these two types of techniques. So first we will talk about conventional breeding techniques. Now as I said, these techniques will actually have the same steps exactly as we have for any normal plant breeding. So first we will screen the germplasm. Germplasm will contain the collection of all the varieties of that particular of seeds or plant for that particular crop. So many crop varieties for disease resistance have been developed against bacteria, fung bacteria, fungi, virus, and they have already been released. For example, if you look at the crop wheat, so there is a particular variety of wheat which is resistant to the disease leaf rust which is caused by a pathogen. Similarly, a variety of cauliflower has been developed which is resistant against the disease black rot which is again caused by a bacteria. So this is how different varieties have already been developed. So now first the germplasm is screened and then the varieties are selected, desired varieties will be selected. So these are the same steps, the general steps. 
then hybridization so once you select the desired variety so you have basically selected the parents now once you have decided the parents then the parents should mate that is hybridization should take place post which selection of hybrid so a lot of hybrids will be formed so the outputs there will be again many different types of outputs which will be formed so out of that you have to select which is the desirable output and that and finally testing and release of new varieties so whichever output you select then you have to test how is disease resistant is that variety how good is its tolerance and other factors for a couple of generations and then that can be released or commercialized into the market so this is the conventional breeding technique so with this conventional breeding technique also we can create plants which are disease resistant so this is the general process so as I said, with this technique, we have already developed varieties of wheat and cauliflower which are disease resistant against specific diseases like the leaf rust of wheat or the black rot of cauliflower. However, with this conventional breeding techniques, there are few disadvantages also associated. For example, here in this case, what do we say? It Everything depends upon our selection from the germplasm. So what do we basically select from the germplasm? We try to select the disease resistant genes from the germplasm because germplasm will contain the collection of all possible alleles for all the genes of that crop. So from all those alleles, you have to choose the alleles which are disease resistant. Now it has been observed that there are only very few disease resistant genes which are present. So now, how do we create more disease resistant genes? Now, if already there are very few resistant genes present, so obviously you will, I mean, from where will you get more disease resistant genes? So how do you create more disease resistant genes? So there came the concept of mutation. So since there were limited number of disease resistant genes, so there was a need to create more disease resistant genes. So how do we create it? So for that came up mutation breeding and that is why mutation breeding is considered to be a preferable technique over conventional breeding technique. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.